At the time when Gertrude Warner was collecting these materials, not only was it unusual for a woman to be collecting Asian art, but it was quite remarkable for anyone to be collecting Asian art. The degree of expertise that she developed and, and her sort of dedication and focus to certain projects sets her apart from a lot of other people. Born in 1863, Gertrude Bass Warner, then simply Gertrude Bass, grew up in a wealthy Chicago family that had a history of philanthropic work. Her grandmother donated a women's dormitory to the University of Chicago. Her aunt donated a children's hospital to the city of Chicago. Her mother was a member of the board of directors at the Chicago Art Institute. And I think all of that had a great impact on Gertrude. Her family provided her with a classic education, which included 10 years studying language and art in France. Like most women of the time, Gertrude eventually married and had children. Around the turn of the century, Gertrude and her husband were divorced. She took one son, and the husband took the other one, and her parents said, we don't want you here in Chicago now. You have gotta remember, this was a 1902, and Families didn't want diver divorce people in their home. In 1904, Gertrude arrived in Shanghai, where her brother, well-known reporter John Foster Bass, had been covering the Boxer Rebellion. Gertrude was introduced to a thriving community of foreigners living in China. Shanghai, where she comes, is a growing, very dynamic city commercially. There is a small but growing foreign population there. And uh, as is the case for most foreigners who are in the city, uh, Warner would have been in a, uh, living in a special foreign enclave with, um, under foreign jurisdiction, not Chinese jurisdictions. Within the foreign community, Gertrude met an American engineer named Murray Warner. They were married soon after. In 1906, she had all of her household goods shipped over from Chicago. And they used the, the base in Shanghai as a place from which to travel to other places in other countries. Mrs. Warner immersed herself in Chinese culture and together with Murray began collecting unique pieces of art from around the continent. Being a woman sets her apart from other collectors at that time, but uh, more than that, the kinds of objects that she was interested in collecting, a lot of daily life objects, textiles, and so on, uh, not the typical kinds of fine arts, sculpture, and painting, which were the primary focus of collection for most uh, male collectors who really dominated the field at the time. Gertrude and Murray eventually returned to the United States, settling in San Francisco. In the fall of 1920, Murray suffered a heart attack. On October 2nd, he died. After Murray's death, Gertrude moved north to live near her son Sam, who was teaching law at the University of Oregon. Shortly after her arrival, she began discussing housing her extensive art collection on campus. And while she was here, she met the president of the university at that time, Prince Lucian Campbell. And through talking with him, they eventually came to an agreement that she would donate her collection of Asian art to the university if the university would agree to build a museum to house it and to name it in honor of her husband, that is to at least name the collection uh, in his honor. And so um, that agreement was reached in 1921 and the university then embarked on a very large fundraising mission, and it took 10 years to get all of the money, but uh, in 1931, the building was completed. Warner was the museum's founding director, and in the 20 years that followed, she acted as its curator. She was 
very cautious about things like temperature control and humidity control and security and light levels at a time when those were really not details that many museum directors paid attention to. I think if you walk on the outside, you notice on the front there are archways that should have had windows in them. And she made them cover those up with bricks, just like the wall, because she had found out that paper things and fabric things could not be exposed to daylight. That's why this museum doesn't have many windows in it at all. Warner's duties with the museum did not keep her from her travels. Once she instigated the development of this museum, she then continued traveling to bring in more pieces for the collection. Um, she also had a couple of research projects, uh, books that she was working on, that required more travel. One of these manuscripts revealed Warner's desire to help bridge the gap between West and East. Many times during the 20 years I have come and gone to and from the Orient, I have seen serious misunderstandings grow out of small transgressions of a purely social character. Believing that East and West must meet more and more as time goes by, I have set down here some of the customs which the West should observe if East and West are to meet in amity and part in friendship. Her motivation for collecting Asian art was also rather different from most of her contemporaries in that she had a, a very clear kind of social focus. That is, she wasn't primarily concerned with acquiring beautiful, rare objects just to be able to own these wonderful things, but rather she also felt that it was very important for people in the West and people in Asia to understand each other better, that this would eventually lead to greater world cooperation and world peace. Warner was able to capture and share her experiences in Asia through an extensive collection of glass lantern slides. One of these slides pictured Warner with well-respected Eugene artist Maud Kearns. Mrs. Warner took Maud Kearns with her on a trip when Maud had a sabbatical from her teaching here at the university. And I think the thing that I've had the most fun about that tour is finding among these slides a slide that shows Mrs. Warner, Maud Kearns, and these two friends from Portland on elephants in India. When I look at Mrs. Warner's lantern slides, you see the little child who's looking right back at the photographer and is not paying attention to the teacher. And the mother's focused on their daughters, and you know, you can just step in there and I could see my daughter in that and I could see worrying about her hair and her makeup and whether she's gonna trip and fall and whether she's gonna remember her lines. And so anytime you see the faces of people, you can respond to them as people that you might know, as people that might be part of your family. And I love the Warner Collections because they take me over there and they take me to those people. Until her death in 1951, Warner remained an active member of the university community. She also fostered different kinds of academic exchanges. Uh, students from Asia came to the university on scholarships that were funded by Gertrude Warner. Uh, she also sponsored an essay contest for many, many years where students from the university would write an essay about Asia, about world peace, about mutual understanding and, uh, or similar kinds of topics. And then the winner would be sent to Asia uh, to travel and to study. I think she is a heroic woman. She worked so hard to preserve her collections and to spread an appreciation for Asian culture. And she literally spent her life doing it. I think Gertrude Warner had, had a sense of the legacy she would like to have left. And that was a, a very vibrant museum that focused on education and on East Asian art. And I think she would have liked to have seen generations of students leave the U of O with a, a better appreciation for their cultures because of that museum. 
Each traveler becomes an added strand in the tie that binds us to the people of other lands, or a source of friction wearing away its threads. He does his small part to establish the feeling of kindness and goodwill between his own country and each land he visits, or he sows the seeds of suspicion and dislike. Every traveler, humble or unknown or highly placed and famous, is a national asset or a national liability. Good manners, the outcome of an effort to understand and comply with the customs of a country out of a real consideration for its people and their habits of thought, true politeness, these are the steps in spreading the gospel of peace on earth, goodwill to men. <laughs>